What's up everybody? Today we are going to learn how to use the smart cruise control with stop and go in a Kia and also the lane keeping assist. Uh, it is a relatively simple system to use. We start off by pushing this cruise button to activate the system and then once we're on the road and we get up to speed we bump this toggle switch down to where it says set and that will activate the smart cruise control system. And of course, what the smart cruise control system does is if you just set the speed, let's say to 70 miles an hour and you're on the highway and no one else is around, the car will just do 70. But since the car has cameras, it will see a car in front of you that happens to be going slower than your predetermined maximum speed. And it will pace that vehicle uh, it's a real boon in stop-and-go traffic and something that I use in my personal vehicle a lot. Another control for the smart cruise control system is this little button right here with the car with the road coming out of the back of it. That actually adjusts your following distance so you can set a longer or shorter following distance from the car in front of you. I live in Southern California, so when I'm on a busy freeway with heavy traffic, I typically use the shortest following distance. If you're on an open road, you know, open highway and you're using it there, you can lengthen it out a little bit because it's a lot less likely that somebody is going to cut you off. And also, you should also select one of the longer following distances if it's raining or snowing or you have kind of reduced traction conditions on the road just to give the car's smart cruise control system more time to stop if it needs to. So we'll also talk about the lane keeping assist and the lane following assist in this video, which are two terms that Kia seems to use interchangeably, but essentially what that does is it uses the same camera system that sees the car in front of you uh, for the adaptive cruise, but it uses it to read the lane lines that differentiate the lanes on the highway or the road. And if it can read them properly, then it can help control the steering to keep you centered in your lane. You do need to keep your hands on the wheel for it to function. And if you're drifting out of your lane, it can correct your steering or beep at you, whatever you want to set it to do. I am currently in a 2022 Kia Telluride. So there's a couple of different ways to turn it on and off. I've got these buttons down here. This one controls the lane keeping lane following assist. So if I push that button, it'll show me up here, system off, lane keeping assist. And then I can also use this guy and scroll through my screens up there. And then if I go to driver assistance and I go to driving assist, then I can turn lane following assist off there as well. I can also do it directly on this page. So they give you a bunch of different ways to turn the lane following, lane keeping assist on and off. We're gonna leave it on. Um, it's a separate system from the Smart Cruise Control, but I'm going to include information about it in this video because I find that they work really well together. So we'll be using both of them. We're gonna get the card on the road and kind of demonstrate how the system works. If you have one of these with the navigation-based smart cruise control with the curve control and the highway driving assistant, I'm gonna make a separate video talking about that so they, there will be a link to that video in the description. All right, so we are out on the road. I'm gonna hit cruise to activate the system. I'm gonna bump down to set my speed. It's now set at 30 miles an hour. I'm gonna increase it a little bit because the speed limit on this road is 40. And the green steering wheel right there indicates that the lane following assist is active, so it's able to read the lane lines and control the steering a little bit. And the fact that there's a car icon in the front of all that indicates that it is locked onto the vehicle in front of me. Now he is slowing down, the Kia slows down, and we are one big happy family. Now again, this button right here is going to adjust your following distance, but I don't really feel like doing that right now. Now there it was. It lost its target and then locked onto this guy and hit the brakes, so I 
Since I have set the cruise, I have not used the pedals and the car just brought itself to a complete stop. Now, if it's only been stopped for about three seconds, it'll move forward on its own. But if it's been longer than that, it'll tell you to either hit the gas pedal or bump down on that little toggle switch to resume. And that stop and go part of the smart cruise control system is really what makes it fantastic because if you get stuck in stop and go traffic, um, it just makes life so much less stressful. And even on a long highway drive, you know, if you're on some long, flat, straight interstate, you know, you should always be paying attention to the road, having your hands on the wheel and all the rest of it. But this is kind of like putting driving in easy mode. Let's see. Now, a couple of things you got to look out for. So it doesn't really know about this curve right here that I'm gonna negotiate. So I just hit the brake real quick and took the smart cruise control out of the equation. And now all I have to do that I'm straightened out again is just bump up to resume. And now my smart cruise is back on. But you wanna be wary of that. Um, the system is smart, hence its name, but it's not all knowing. It won't read red lights. It won't stop at a red light, at least currently. The Kia system won't. Um, it won't slow down for curves like that unless you have one with the navigation-based curve control and you are on a specific highway or controlled access road that is programmed into the navigation system and you have all that activated there there'll be a link in the description to a video about all that stuff uh, that's not really what we're talking about on this one this is more just the simpler and more common smart cruise control with stop and go and this will give you an idea of following distance as well so like i said i do currently have it set to the shortest following distance and i'm doing 35 miles an hour and that is the amount of distance that it's giving. I'll open it up a little bit. So we, we just push this button. And then as you can see, hopefully, we get more and more bars right there. That's the longest following distance. And then level three, level two, level one. So let's set it to level three. Uh-oh, this guy got in front of me. So the stop and, stop and go just brought us to a complete stop. And again, it's telling me that I will need to use the accelerator pedal or the resume switch. So I just gave a quick tap on the gas pedal and off we go. I've still got the cruise control set to 40, which is the speed limit on this particular road. So we're just about at 40. And you can see that actually the difference in distance between one bar and three bars at this speed is not that great. Um, it is an intelligent system. So if you're going faster, it will leave a longer distance in between you and the car in front of you. And if you're going slower, then it's gonna leave a shorter distance. So that is a variable as well. And again, if you're driving it in kind of inclement weather where the roads might be a little bit slippery and you're using this system, you are uh, gonna to wanna to use the longer following distances just to give the car more time to react to whatever happens. I'm gonna to touch the gas pedal again to get it moving again. But you can see just how pleasant this makes the driving experience. I mean, this is in town and I'm not really going all that far right now, but it's the same concept on the freeway, right? And if you get stuck in stop and go traffic, the worst, most annoying kind of traffic is not, you know, a lot of stop and go traffic, you not, don't necessarily come to a stop all the time, but it's like, 
you're doing three miles an hour, you're doing eight miles an hour, you're doing four miles an hour, you're doing 12 miles an hour, you're doing nine miles an hour, you're doing 20 miles an hour. That is when this system just does the best work that it can because it handles all that for the most part. A couple of things you wanna keep in mind, like if somebody cuts you off really hard from the side, uh, like if this truck right here cut me off, I would hit the brakes um, because the car system for the smart cruise control mainly looks forward. It does have some peripheral vision, but not that much. And another thing you wanna look out for is what type of vehicle are we actually following? So the example I always use is a flatbed truck with nothing on it. Uh, is the car locked on to the actual back of the truck or is it locked on to the back of the cab? So keep that in mind uh, when you are using your smart cruise control system in whatever type of car you have. And again, always keep your hand on the wheel, pay attention to the road, film yourself while you're doing it, that's good luck and drive safely. If you have a Hyundai with this system, I've already made a video about that. I'll put a link in the description below. They're very similar, but there are a couple of slight differences in operation. So I would recommend that you watch the Hyundai video for a Hyundai. And again, um, if you have the navigation-based smart cruise with uh, the highway driving assistant and the curve control, there'll be a separate video about that as well. Link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Have yourself a fantastic day. See, I hit the brake for that guy. And drive safely. Bye-bye.